Good morning. Today, we're going to talk about favorite child. In a family where there's multiple children, this lesson does not go to, you know, if you're an only child. But even still, as a, even a lonely child, preferential treatment is a danger. And we see this topic in the Bible. And we've got much scripture to read today and look at on the screen. And hopefully you can see well on the screen. And what we have is Genesis 37. And we're going to look at, again, a lot of scripture. We're going to look at a lot of people. Famous names that we know in the Bible, and maybe as we read through our Bible through the year, that I didn't see that. And again, we we did a study either yesterday or the other day about parenting and how we teach our children unwillingly to sin by our own sin. When we want the good of our children, and our children see the worst in us. And here's another example of parenting. The Lord's laid on my heart. Maybe somebody out there, they're a parent and they're having troubles. In Genesis 37, verse 3, and I hope you can see it. Now Israel, Jacob. Loved Joseph more than all his children. There it is. Favorite child. Jacob has 13 children. We know the 12 tribes of Israel and Dinah. And of his 13 children, he loves Joseph more than all of them. And also look to the fact is that Jacob has four wives. Leah, who the Bible says was hated. The Bible records that Jacob hated Leah. And yet he had marriage bed relations with her and had children. It, it is remarkable to me that uh, the Bible does say that Leah was hated. And yet, Jacob went to bed with him multiple times. And I forget how many children she had. Dinah was one, one, the daughter. But he loved Rachel more than Leah. And he loves, look now, verse 3 again. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Because he was the son of his old age and the son of Rachel. And he made him a coat of many colors. Oh man, there are songs about Joseph in his coat. There are stories of Joseph in his coat. Sunday school, we learn about Joseph and his and his brightly colored coat. And you can go to Google Images and you can type in Joseph and his coat and you'll find all kinds of pages and colored pages and, and images of Joseph and that famous coat of many color. But did we read verse 4? Now we won't go to verse 4 in the Sunday school lesson for children. But for adults and parents, we need to do 37.4. And when his brethren, that would be his loving brothers, I'm not sure about Dinah, saw that their father loved him, Joseph, more than his brother. The, the, the brothers, the sons, and maybe daughter, but the sons, we know the sons, Saw in their father 12 sons, one daughter, 
The sons saw in their father one child was the special child of all children. And I would imagine of the twelve brethren too that they would see that Rachel was the best. But we're not talking about Rachel. And his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers. They hated him, Joseph, and could not speak peacefully unto him. So whether you have two children, three children, 12, 13 children, when you come to the fact is that one child, or maybe two children, there are children who have been set special above the other children. The Bible records that there is hatred, and we can't speak peaceful. Now that's Jimmy. And Jimmy, mommy loves Jimmy more than us. Mommy will make Jimmy the special cake he likes and endures with the frosting. And we just get a plain chocolate vanilla cake. Margaret gets to choose where we're going to go on the weekends. Dad will go to Amazon and, and, and type in specifically for Andrew for a gift. And for us, you know, we just go to Walmart and, you know, just pick something out. Anything that can be found. Harry's pictures are on the front of the refrigerator. Thomas' picture is on Dad's computer. At Daddy's workplace, Mary's picture is a big picture, and us, we're just little pictures. Yes, Mom loves my brother. Oh, she loves him so much. And for Lisa, she's going to get the best schooling. She's going to go to the best college. She has chosen her career. And we're not done. And we move over here. And you see, we're going to move to Genesis 25. We're going to go down Genesis 25, 28. And Isaac, 25, 28, Genesis, Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Okay, now, where did Jacob get I love Joseph? More than my other children. He got it from his parents. <clears throat> Isaac and Rebekah are the parents of Jacob. And Jacob has a brother named Esau. And it is foolish to say that Isaac loved Esau. Why? Because Esau brought him venison. And that's in the Bible times. That's not just deer meat. It's any wild game in the Bible. The fact is that Esau would go out and hunt game. That's venison. It could have been wild goat. It could have been deer. 
But Jacob loved Joseph because he was a he was the son of his old age and Rachel. Foolish. And we have Isaac loving Esau because Esau brought him food. And then the Bible records Rebecca loved Jacob. Now, what kind of family is that when we saw in Genesis 37, 4, that favorite child, favoritism of a child brought hatred and brought unkind, unpeaceable words. Can you imagine what it was like in Isaac and Rebecca's home? where one boy was loved more by the father and the other boy was loved more by the mother. And together in the family, what we will learn, the fact is, you can't have a good, loving, bonding family when I love you more. Yeah. Well, I love you more. Yeah. And can you imagine the, the, the house of Isaac and Rebekah? Well, you know, Esau wants to go down and and float in the in the in the salt sea. He heard that you know in the salt sea that nothing sinks, and he wants to visit the salt sea. And Rebecca says, "Well, you know, Jacob." Wants to go to the Mediterranean Sea. He wants to go to the sea boat. Well, you know, we got to go to the Salt Sea because, because of Esau. Well, we got to go to the Mediterranean Sea because of Jacob. Can you imagine Isaac and Rebecca? Oh, we're going to have, you know, a family picnic. And Esau, he loves goat meat. And Rebecca said, yeah, we're going to have this great picnic, but, you know, Jacob loves hamburgers. Now, Isaac would be pulling to get goat meat more, and Rebecca would be pulling to get hamburgers more. And there would be the battle, there would be unkind words and, and, and troubling situations because Esau would want something and Jacob would want another. And the father would favor to one child and the mother would favor to another. And in, in, in a family where, where, where there's children and you got one favorite child over the rest of the children. And that favorite child wants to play baseball. Oh, we're going to baseball. We're going to Little League. We're going to do all that. And you may have a child who wants to build scale models. You may have a child that, you know, wants to read books and, well, you know, work baseball. And there's nothing more. I come from Connecticut. And, and you got New York and you got Massachusetts. And the thing is, you got New York Yankee fans and, and you got the Boston Red Sox fans. And it just can cause my family like the, 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 the New York Yankees. I like the Boston Red Sox just to be the black sheep of the family. Yankees, Yankees, I'd be Red Sox, Red Sox. And this argument of the families would bring the black sheep of the family. Well, our favorite child likes baseball, and, well, that black sheep of the family, he likes to read books. And that as parents, we need to, okay, this child likes base, okay, baseball. This child, well... He likes to read books. What kind of books do you like to read? Oh, uh, wow. You hit three home runs. Eh. So why do you like mysteries? What is it that mysteries that you don't like the classics? 
do you like some of the classics? Go to the ball game. Sit on the hard benches and watch the play. And then the other chap. Well, okay, let's go to the bookstore. And let's, I'll go with you to the bookstore and pick up five books that you like. And you get in the car and what were the five books you took? Oh, I think, what's it about? And then the kid, the favorite kid with the baseball, how do you feel about hitting the five home runs? Were you scared when you, you came to the second strike and, oh, no, am I going to get the third strike? And then the other child, do you read any other, I mean, are you interested in like cookbooks? Are you interested? I mean, and what I'm trying to say is, are you showing interest in both both the favorite child that you live, baseball, and then the least, you know, to put a little effort into what they like? Because we see the life of of, of e, we see the life of Jacob with his parents in his own life that there is problems, there's situations. We see hatred. And when you got the favorite child that loves the baseball, that child that's least hey, that reads the book, he ain't gonna do nothing with baseball, and he don't care about baseball because his brother is the a number one. You have brought about hatred and unkind words. And you have brought two siblings in your house that they, maybe they can't get along with each other because of mom and dad. And this is just as bad as the lesson we learned a couple days ago, if not yesterday, I forget when it was, that, oh, we're teaching our children the bad things in life because we're doing the bad things. In life. We are sinning before our children, and they are watching us, and they doing that sin when they grow up. And on this lesson here, well, you know, we're raising our children and we have favoritism towards our children and we are bringing hatred and unkind words. And in the Bible says, John, right, if we hate our brothers, we are a murderer. And mom and dad may have brought that hatred to a physical blood brother because I love that child more than I love the other child. Or I am more interested in what that child does than what that child does. And by the scriptures is, if we bring hatred of two or more siblings, and we saw it in Genesis 37, verse 3 and 4, they wanted to murder Joseph physically. It was in their thoughts, and that's what John the Apostle writes in 1 John. God had more respect to Abel's offering than Cain's offering, and Cain got angry enough to murder Abel. And my, bro and my, my brother's keeper. Oh, God, you loved his offering more than you loved mine. And that goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 4. And the thing is, with this lesson, uh, what we're teaching right now, if it goes long, I apologize. But the fact is, we may be bringing our children up in the Lord, violating the commandment as a Christian family. We read our Bible, we go to a Bible-believing church, we're King James, we're wonderful, we pray, we do what God wants us to do, and we brought our children up in hatred, and that's a violation of the commandment written by John and written by Jesus that we shall love one another. <clears throat> but we brought our children up 
hating each other. Because mom and dad went to Sally's recital and they didn't care about me and my baseball cards. The, the recital was more important than the base. Uh, the, 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 they're they're going to have a baseball card uh, uh, gathering at the Civic Center or something. And we've got to put our children together what this child likes, what this child likes, what this child likes. we got to put it equally. Or the possibility we could bring hatred, unkind, unpeaceable atmosphere in our house. Where the Bible says, if you don't love your brother, you're a murderer. You're a sinner. And again, that's a sin that's been brought by our parents. A parent. Genesis 27. This is a serious matter. Genesis 27. Verse 3. And now therefore I pray thee, take thy weapons, Jacob, uh, Isaac talking to Esau, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out in the field and take me some venison. No, we read that in 25, 28. Isaac loves Esau because of his venison. Make me savory meat such as I love. I love. That meat I love is because I love my son more because that's, my son will bring me the food I like. I love the food. I love my son. The Bible records that Jacob was a plain man and Jacob stayed with his mother. Jacob could cook. Remember the pottage that Esau wanted so much? So in Esau and Jacob, there's not really that much of a difference. Almost to the fact is that maybe with, 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 because Rebecca made a meal, Jacob could have learned or have learned how to make the same meal that Esau. But Isaac, Loved his son more because of venison. And bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. That's not the order of the blessings according to the Bible. The order of the blessing of the Bible is not because you can make me food. It's because Esau rightfully is the firstborn son. Jacob's not. Now, rightfully for the blessing of the father upon the children, Jacob is eliminated for the fact is he was the second born, not the first born. But Isaac has put the blessing, not of the first born child, but, oh, he can bring me food. He can hit a home run. He can go to Harvard. The other one, he can't do it. He's not good enough. He... And now you're downplaying another. Hey, my, look at this. Look what how great he can do for me. You, you're not good enough. And how many times have you have heard the words or thought the words of a parent to a child to say, that child's not good enough? Oh, Sam. Sam is talked about by dad or mother. Well, don't you have other children? Oh, oh, Sam. What, what about the other children? Eh. 
And we've heard it. And Rebekah heard what Isaac spake to, spake to Esau's son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for guns and to bring it. And Rebekah said unto Jacob, Now remember, Jacob, I mean, Isaac loves Esau more. Rebekah loves Jacob more. And Rebekah said unto Jacob, her son, Behold, I heard thy father speak to Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, make me savory meat that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord my death. Now, therefore, obey my voice according to the commandment. And she's going to get Jacob to get some goat meat to deceive dad. Okay, Rebecca, no matter what Venice said, no matter what it is, minus Esau selling his birthright for the for the pottage. Let's not look at that. But for the moment of Rebecca is that birthright, I don't know if they knew about the pottage, but that birthright belongs to Esau, and you are going to deceive your husband. You're going to have your son deceive his father. Jacob is going to lie to his father. That's a violation of, though there's no commandment yet, that is no, that is a violation of honor thy father and mother, and that is brought on by the mother because she loves Jakey more than she loves Esau. What kind of mess do we have in Genesis 27? And I'll tell you, when we come down to 27, where is it? The worst words ever for, for Rebecca. 27, 13. 13, rebellion. And his mother, Rebecca, said unto him, Upon me be thy curse. That's right. She will send Jakey off to her family, off to her brother, who will deceive Jacob. I'll work seven years for Rachel. And he ends up with Leah. He's got to work 14 years to get Laban just messes up. And Rebecca sends Jacob off to Laban. And she says, son, I'll call you back when Esau, well, look in a moment, is angry with you. And when Jacob comes home, his mother has died. Rebecca never sees Jakey again. And Jakey, Jacob, never sees Rebecca again. Now, what happens here? Okay. Let's, let's, let, we'll move down to the end of the... Genesis 27. Look at here. Um, trying to find it. Give me my head. 41. Esau hated. Is that not Genesis 37, 3 and 4? And Jacob and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherein his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father at hand, and I will slay my brother Jacob. Cain slew Abel. Esau hates Jacob enough. I'm going to kill you. And the apostle John. I didn't look this up. Let's see if I can find it. Look at this. Let me just read down. First John. Can you see down here? He that says he, he's in the light. I'm saved. I love the Lord Jesus. And hated his brother is in darkness. Down here at the bottom. Read it up if I can. Okay. He that hates his brother is in darkness even until now. If you're raising your child to hate the other child because of favoritism, 
Look what John said. Verse 2, chapter 2, verse 11. But he that hateth his brothers in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not where he goeth, because darkness has blinded his eyes, and mother, father, if not parent, you may bring your child to, to you, you may bring your child to hate their sibling, brother or sister. Because of your faith, favoritism, and we are in the New Testament of the church age written by the Apostle John, who writ the, who written the Gospel of John, who written the book of Revelation. Look what he says about hating your brother or sister. And I know it's talking about Christians, but what if you are in a Christian home your family is saved, and your children hate each other and can't speak kind to each other because you love one or the other. Friend, like we learned the other day with parenting, you could teach your children to sin by your sins. And today you could teach your children to hate their siblings. Because you sinned against your children by loving one over the other. And you know, there's this hatred in the church too. When you, you got the pastor of a church and he likes a certain family, it's called cliques. And he has favoritism for one family or one person in the church, and that causes hatred, and you are causing a sin upon the congregation of your church because you favor somebody or family more than others. You brought about a sin. You are in the family of, Re of Isaac and Rebekah, and you are in the family of Jacob and Rachel and Leah and, and, and the two handmaids. And I heard, and I, I talked, there's a pastor, I, I went to a church, and it was a pastor or something, and, and, and he told me, well, you know, Jesus had Peter, James, and John. And did you realize the Gospels also come to the fact is that the 12 disciples fought often? That even in the book of Acts, there was contentions between the disciples. And that there was even contentions with Paul when it came to Mark and Silas and uh, 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 Apollos. That you see this thing of the hatred and the favoritism, you see it in the book of Acts. And that is even recorded in the book of it. The contentions were so strong between them. Talking about the Apostle Paul. Silas went with Paul, and I believe Paul took Mark. And then later on, as Paul is closing his life and he's coming to the end of life, he has to write the words of Eat and Crow, Mark. Take him. He's good for the ministry. That was Paul eating crow. I don't want to take Mark. He's so... <laughs> and there was a point in the ministry of Jesus Christ that the, that the disciples got upset. What did they get upset about? Because James and John wanted to sit at, at, the, at the very throne of God. Their mother said, oh, if you could have James and John sit on either side of you. And that caused contention of the other disciples that mama loved James and John over the ten of, the ten of us, the 12 disciples. Look at that. We're looking at the 12 brethren of Israel, and we're looking at the 12 disciples of Jesus. And there was contention because there was more love over another. And we're not done. Look at 1 John 3.15, over here. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Cain killed his brother. Esau wanted to kill his brother. 
And the brethren of Joseph wanted to kill him. I think John the Apostle knew the Old Testament teaching to write what he wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that told us the book of Genesis. Look at verse chapter 4, verse 20. And if a man say, I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. That's a pretty bold statement because you know who Jesus says the liar is, the father of lies, John 8, 44, John 8, 44, the same John that wrote the gospel, the same John that wrote the epistle. We're talking about Satan now. And you may have a Christian family, your family may be saved, and they're going to heaven, and their name is in the land's book of life, and you may raise a bunch of liars of your children. And when we read Genesis 37, 3 and 4, 4 said they hated Jacob, and chapter 4 said they could not speak peacefully unto Jacob. And I would assume some of them unpeaceable statements would have been lies about Joseph. And you yourself as a parent may be teaching your children to be liars and haters and walk in darkness because I love Debbie more than I love Eric. I spend more time with Mark than I do with Lucy. And that, that Harry gets better grades than Timothy. Or Susie wants to learn the guitar. And Erica wants to learn French. Friend, we're talking about a serious sin here. And we're talking about a sin that's in the book of Je Oh, that's Old Testament. We're looking at First John. We've been looking at the gospel. I read the Bible all the way through, but uh, you study. I'm going to close this painting. We learn about Joseph's coat of many colors in the children's Sunday school class. Amen. I, excuse me. I am all for it. I, I, I don't believe a Sunday school class should bring in extra stories that are not in the Bible. I believe a Sunday school class for children should be all nothing but the King James Bible. I don't believe in those veggie tales. I don't believe in Patch the Pilot. I don't believe in all that nonsense. I believe in the children's Sunday school. It ought to be open the Bible and teach what the Bible says, or you need to be removed as a Sunday school teacher. That's my stand. And Joseph's coat of many colors is a wonderful, great story for children. Let's bring it to the adult Sunday school class. Let's bring it up one more notch for the adults. Joseph's wonderful color coat brought hatred and unpeace in the family. As we study the Bible. And look what we have here. In verse 42, again, the words of Esau, the oldest son, was told Rebekah. She sent and called Jacob, the younger son, and said, Behold, 
Thy brother Esau touches thee, touches thee, does come for thee, purposely kill thee. Rebecca, it was your fault. You took your favorite son to to deceit uh, to deceive your husband, his father, and your son and his brother. And then she goes, verse 43, Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. He obeyed your voice before, Rebekah. That's why Esau hates him and wants to kill him. Did you get that? Verse 45, she said, Unto thy brother's anger, because of you, Rebecca, turn away from thee and forget that which she has done to him. He's not going to forget that. Forever in the entire life of Esau, he has lost the blessing of the firstborn child because mom deceived her husband and taught her son to deceive his. He ain't going to forget it. And Esau and his children and his children's children and his children's children hate Israel because of this day. That when Babylon comes and destroys Jerusalem in the time of Jeremiah, when the Jews the Jew, flee from Babylon, Edom, Esau, gathers some of the Jews and turns them over to Babylon. And she said, I will send and fetch thee from thence. No, you won't. You'll die. And we're not done. Genesis 37. Now, I'm sorry this is a long one, but this is what the Lord laid on my heart today. 37.4. And when his brethren, their father, when their brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully unto him. Favorite child syndrome. Favorite child in your house. You are born again. You are saved. Your name is written in the land's book of life. Your wife's name is written in the land's book of life. Your your children's names are written in the land's book of life. They are signed, sealed, and, 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 and the Holy Spirit dwells with them. And there is hatred and there's unkind words. And what we saw the Apostle John writes to us, there is murder in your house. There is sin in your house. There is hatred in your house. There is unkind words in your house. And you're not right with God. And you have done destruction to your children that will last, that will last, that will last. Maybe, maybe for a lifetime. And as Rebecca and Isaac have taught Esau and Jacob to be favorite children and, and unkind children and hatred and murder, Jacob grows up and learns the sins of his father and his mother that we taught the other day, that I got a favorite son above all my children. We've gone to the lesson the other day. What did Isaac and Rebecca teach Jakey? Thou shalt love thy son more than thy other son. And here it is in Genesis 37. 
It's the same sin we learned the other day about the parents teaching their children to sin. Here it is. Jacob is doing the same sin mama and daddy taught him. And it has the same consequences. Esau hated Jacob. Jacob's brethren hated Joseph. Esau wanted to kill Jacob. Wait till we read more. The brethren of, of Jacob wants to kill Joseph. Cain hated Abel. And Cain killed Abel. We got a scripture foundation of the Old Testament that many don't read. And we got the New Testament and, and the epistles written to Christians. Don't hate your brethren. You are in darkness. You are a murderer. And we saw it in the life of the disciples with Jesus. And Jesus said you're to love your brethren. John said you are to love your brethren. And we see brethren not loving each other because the sins of the parents. Now John will go to write to say, if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our sins. But the Bible also says, Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Your children are hating each other. They are in darkness, though they are saved. And they are counted as murderers because you sowed the seed of Billy. Oh, how wonderful Billy is. And Margie, oh well, who cares about Margie? And parents don't even realize what they're doing. That's the biggest deception of Satan. They probably don't even realize that they're spending more time with Eric. And poor Jerry. That's the worst deception of Satan. The parent may not even know, not even realize until maybe a message like this. And that the parent has to put effort into all the children correctly. You're interested in watercolor painting. You like aquarium fish. You like to collect sea cells. You're interested in cookbooks. You want to cook. You want to play the flute. You like bubble gum. Whatever it is of all your children, you've got to put it all to the children and not just one child. So the sexual relations in a marriage bed and the blessings that God gives us upon our children we got to give all our children equal time of what they like. Or you may end up with Verse 34, and when his brethren saw that the father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully unto him. And you run that reference today in the church age to a saved family to what we read in 1 John. That if your children today under the church age, if they hate 
the other children in their household and their siblings, brothers or sisters, there's darkness, there's murder, and there's sin, and it has been brought to you by mom or dad or both. And mom or dad or both may be in the church choir. Dad may be a pastor of the church. Mom or dad may be Sunday school teachers. Mom or dad may have nursery or other positions in the church. Mom or dad or both may be faithful to a Bible-believing church. And mom and or dad may be teaching their children to sin, the sin of hatred, the sin of unkind words, and the sin of darkness, and the sin of murder. There had to have been favoritism of Adam and Eve and their children because Adam was a farmer and Cain was a farmer. Adam had to love Cain more because Cain did what Adam did, farm. Scripture was scripture. I'm talking about a serious sin here. Now, I in my family, my children... I can't get into the detail, but I'm really restricting it on time with my children. But my son is interested in civil war and a little more in battles like that. And my daughter is interested in books and art. And my daughter has a lot of different things she's interested in. Now, I, I am restricted today with my both my children. I, I, I give to what my daughter, I can give to the best I can do. And I'm very limited in the situation that my son has got himself into. But when it comes to what it likes, I both. And I, I am restricted with my son and to the fact that I got to tell my son, I, I can't get into it, but you know, there, my son's interest in civil war. I, I can tell him, you know, hey, you know, son, I saw this great civil war book, but I gotta apologize because well, the situation you got yourself into, I can't get it to you. And if and if I could give my son stuff that he likes. In the situation he's got himself into, if he were to be moved, he can't take that with him. And if I were to buy him a book about the Civil War, and I have given him a script, subscription to magazine, to a Civil War magazine, and they would tell him to move, he would have to turn that over to the library or give it to somebody else. He can't keep it, can't take it. And he would, he, okay, Dad, I understand. And Dad, I, I thank you, you were, you were thinking about me. And I'm sorry that I got myself in this situation. You can't, I am limited to my son more or less to my daughter. That the fact is, I, I can only tell my son, I, I wish I could get that for you. Oh, I saw this great thing. Oh, hey, you know, I saw this great story about this. Because I, I have read to me before I go to bed stories of soldiers in war. And hey, you know. But I expressed the, in, the interest in my son, what he And I expressed the interest in what my daughter. But we're not done. We're not done. 
with Joseph and his coat. Verse 8, Genesis 37, 8. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? This is Joseph's dream. Shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him even yet, they hated him yet more for his dreams and his words. God has come into Joseph's life and God has told Joseph, hey, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be a ruler. You're going to be over your, your brothers. And the brothers are like, how do and the fact is, when we, we know what the scriptures say, we know what's coming in Genesis, it's going to be for the good of Joseph's brothers that Joseph is going to be made head. But right now, we don't want to hear it because, oh, now God's got favoritism over Joseph. Really nice. And it causes more hatred. So here we are. I'm sorry that this lesson is long, but I don't care. So here we are. We got a saved family. They're in a Bible-believing church. They're doing right. And the parents love one child more than the other, or whatever the situation is. And here's a child from the... God called me to the ministry. Yeah, where do you think you are? Holy Joe. Hatred. I read my Bible. Look what I... Oh, shut up. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear from you. Mama's boy. Daddy's boy. You hear those expressions? And God may speak to that child that you love, adore more than the other children, but because you caused the hatred, because you caused the unkind words, they're not going to listen. And it may be important. Because later on, it's going to turn out for these brethren of Joseph, it's going to be very important. But right now, there's hatred. And what can be worse to be that the siblings hate a child and God is trying to use that child to speak to the family? Or how about this? You got the you got a favorite child, husband or wife, mother or father. You got the favorite child and God speaks to the less favorite child. That has happened to me. I am the black sheep of my family. And I am the doctor of theology. I am the one that God speaks through the Bible. I am the one that gives lessons in the Bible. I am one that God is has, has blessed to know the Bible and to preach the Bible and preach the gospel and teach and try to have Christians grow in the Lord. And my family's like, who are you to think? I've got a brother. And it may not, if I, the statement I'm going to make may not be kind, may not be right, and I may have family members hate me, but this is what we're talking about. As far as the word of God and that, my brother was a failure. As far as living for the Lord and everything like that, my brother was a failure. And he was a church accountant and all that for a church. My brother would never speak of the Lord. I had never heard my brother tell me about going out witnessing, telling people about Jesus. I never heard my brother tell me about what he read in the Bible. I heard about his baseball. I heard about how he would sell stuff out of a magazine. I've heard, but I never heard him talk about the Lord. I never heard him praise the Lord. I don't care if my family don't like what I'm saying right now. It's the truth. 
He would post more things on his Facebook about baseball than about Jesus. And then my family look at my Facebook post, uh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Bible, 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 Bible. And then when I rebuke my, my family for the sins they're doing, who do you think you are? I think God's speaking to me. Uh, no, you're the black sheep of the family. Uh huh. But I'm the black sheep of the family that God is speaking to and God is using. And I've got testimonies from prisons. I've got the testimonies from churches. I've got the testimonies from Facebook. I've got the testimonies of YouTube. I got, <coughs> I got the testimonies of street preacher. I got the, God's using me. My brother went to multiple colleges. I went to two colleges. I am a doctor of theology, and I've got a, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, um, AA, um, I don't even know what, for, for um, I don't even know what the, the, the doctor I got from Daytona College, office management, uh, administrative assistant, no, that's not it, associate, associates. I got an associate's degree in, in office management, and I, I'm a doctor of theology. Okay. My brother didn't like me, and I didn't, I didn't like my brother. What are you going to do? And I know I caused division. If my family hears that, I caused division, but that's what I'm talking about. But there were times, my brother went to school for accounting. There were times that, you know, I'd contact my brother and say, hey, listen, I got this thing about, and he'd help me. I assume he would help. Them. But most of my family, most of my family, when it comes to the word of God, they, they don't listen to me. And they won't listen to me. And when, here's the hatred. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet more dream, another dream, and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. Behold, the sun and the moon, the star and, and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And he told his father and his brethren, his father rebuked him. Well, that was one thing. The father loved, he rebuked him. Look at verse 11. The brethren envied him. It causes envy. Envy is a sin. Do you know what Pilate said? Pontius Pilate. Pilate said for envy they delivered Jesus to him to be crucified. The nation of Israel envied Jesus Christ who was their brethren because Jesus was Jewish. Jewish. His mother was Jewish, of the tribe of Judah, of Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob and Judah. They hated Jesus. And they could not speak well of Jesus. Why? Because the Father in heaven loved Jesus more than the sinners. It's just a proven fact. God showed favoritism. <laughs> God showed favoritism to Jesus Christ, his son, more than to any of the Jews, more than the Pharisees, more than the Sadducees, more than the priests, and they hated Jesus. Exactly what we've been teaching. Now, God hating Jesus, God loving Jesus, 
is not a sin. God loving Jesus more than others is not a sin. But when you got the family atmosphere and you got it in the family house, what have we been reading? But then again, I am a child of God. I am a son of God. And God loves me as much as he loves Jesus. Because of Jesus. You say, well, Jesus had Peter, James, and John. Well, maybe the disciples didn't want to put the effort into it. I mean, there's a time that, that, that the disciples were in the ship, and only one disciple said, can I get out of the boat? The others said nothing. So Jesus said, come on out, Peter. Well, he, you know, Peter was more than the other. Well, the 11 didn't do nothing. At least, how come the moment, okay, when Peter stepped on the boat, he's actually now walking on, why didn't the other 11? It's, it, it's also an attitude. You may have in a family, okay, the family, maybe that maybe that one child, you know what? I, I just don't want to bother with the parents. I just want to go, I want to go be a loner, which is not good. And there may be in a family a situation, you know, the child, you know what? Give them all the credit. Give them all. Just let me go study in my room. Let me go sit out. My son was like that. We be do my son would my son would go out in the backyard and sit down in the chair and read a book. We went I I didn't want to my, my wife Tracy made me go to the beach. We would go to the beach and I didn't want to be there. I found late my daughter didn't want to be there. My son would bring a book. My son would sit on the beach and read a book. You may have a child that, you know, hey, I don't care. You know, give me something, uh, give me something for my hobby, what I do, and I'll be pleased. I'll be content. You want to treat him better? I don't hate him. for just, I'm happy. I'm content. That's a blessing. Still, don't give that child more time somehow. You know what I'm saying? Whatever your family night is, you know that. I mean, if he wants to be a, you know, alone, you know, he's content. He wants to be, alone, yeah, you know. Give him a little more to what family night, whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't play favoritism among your children. You got one child's interest in baseball. Wow, great. How'd you, and you got another child interest in butterflies. How many different kinds of butterflies are there? Is there, a, is there a particular plants that we can plant in the yard that will attract certain butterflies that you will like? What do you do with baseball bats? How many different kind of baseball bats are there? Well, how many different kind of flowers attract butterflies? You want a baseball bat, a baseball glove, and a baseball? Okay. You want a butterfly collection? Okay. But let me make you a favorite coat. Let me make you, oh, to get you the best clothes. And, 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 and you get hand-me-downs. Well, who do you think he is? Or 
Where are we? Hatred. Now look at verse 14. And he said him, Go, I pray thee. See what it be well with thy brethren. Now Joseph in the in, in, in this in the beginning of this chapter, look at here. Verse 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lads were with the sons of Billah, and the sons of Zilpha, his father's wife. And Joseph brought unto his father an evil report. What is this? This is Joseph coming home to his father, and Joseph's a favorite child. Guess what Judah did? You're not going to believe what Naphtali said. The words of Joseph is, guess what? I'm telling Dad. And Jacob would be, well, tell me, son. How do you know? Well, come back down here. Verse 14. And he said, Go, I pray thee, see where it be well with thy brethren, well with the flock, and bring me word again. Don't have your children spy on the other children and come back and make a report because you're going to train that child to be a gossip and a rumorist. Or tell rumors. How's that for sin? Teaching your children, guess what? I'm going to go tell mom. You have brought up a tattletale and no other children in your house will enjoy a tattletale. It causes hatred. It causes unpeaceable words. Here it is. In the Bible, it's, I got to apologize for my sickness. I got to get a drink here. I apologize for that. Don't train your children to hate each other. Don't train your children to speak unkind words to each other. And don't favoritism your children. And don't teach your child to be a tattletale. Don't bring any rumors into your house and don't speak any rumors out of your mouth. In the King James 1611 Bible, we'll move on. 3720. Come now, therefore, let us slay him. This is the brethren of Joseph talking about Joseph. Let's cast him in some pit. And we'll say some evil beast will devour him. What we're going to do is we're going to murder Joseph. We're going to kill that child. That's what John said. And then we're going to lie about it. Murder and lies, John 8, 44, is of Satan. Because, because. Because I love that child more than I love you. I'm more interested in that child than I am with you. And I may not even know I'm doing it as a parent. Or I may know I'll do it as a parent. Some parents do it. They just. And then some parents, they have no idea until they're going to hear a message like this. And a loving parent mom or dad who loves the Lord are going to probably hear this message and they're going to get on their knees and they're going to repent properly. Problem is the damage has already been done. You have sown the seeds all oh, when the crops come in. 
And I hope that this message will get out to somebody. Maybe they're, they're not parents yet. And before they become parents, and they, they get together and say, honey, I heard this message. Listen to this message. Please, please, before we have children, let not these two messages happen. Let's try not to teach our children to sin. Let's try not to have favoritism. Whatever we do as a husband and wife, as a father and a mother, this is serious. And then uh, two par uh, parents come across, a mother or a father or mother and father get together and they hear a message like this and they come across and grab their spouse and say, we need to get on our knees. We need to apologize before God. We have damage in our home. Oh, Lord. And repent. And repent. John said murderer. John said darkness. And we see it in Genesis 37. We saw it in Genesis 27. Let's move on. So. Watch this. Verse 23. And they came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. Then there's that coat again. There's that Sunday school for little children. There's that coat of, of many colors of Joseph. There it is. Sunday school. Little children. That's it. Oh, Joseph. Let's bring it to the adult Sunday school class. Joseph. That very same coat was ripped off their brother because they hated their brother. They wanted to murder their brother. It has caused unkind words. That coat that was given to, to Joseph by their dad was taken off because dad loved Joseph more than he loved his brother. He got a special gift from his dad that they didn't get, and they hated their dad, and they hated Joseph. And they hated that goat. And I have heard times in families with the same thing that the child has gone and broken, has stolen, has damaged a gift of mom and dad because favorite child syndrome or whatever you want to call it. This is that little Joseph coat of the Sunday school class for children. And we're bringing that coat of, of Joseph from the, from, the, from the Sunday school class of children. We're bringing it to the Sunday school class of adults. It's an entire different story for children. It's an entire different story for adults. And again, there are parents out there, there are saved family out there, there are families that are dedicated to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, to their church, to the service, and they are doing what the Bible tells them to do, and they got trouble in the house, according to what the Apostle John wrote in 1 John. And Satan has sunk in John 8 44, the murderability and the lies with a little deception, a little wedge. The best message I ever heard was the wedge by a pastor in Ledger, Connecticut. And that message was about the wedge. You take a wedge, you use for cutting wood. Chopping wood. It's it's a triangular uh, tool. And it has a pointed end. And what you do is you take that wedge and you put it. Uh, if you got a big log, you can't split with an axe. And you put that wedge on that on that log. And you take a mallet, a hammer, and bam. All right. 
And you got that wedge. Okay, now you don't need to hold that wedge. It wasn't in the log. But now you have taken that wedge, that triangular piece, you have put it in the log. Wham! You don't need to hold it no more. And you bash it with the hammer and the mallet. And it goes more and more into that wood. Now, you could take that wedge out, and guess what? You would now have a permanent scar in that, in that wood. And you can't get rid of that scar. Nothing's going to get rid of that scar. The wedge has violated the, the, the log. And you can take that wedge, you put it back, and you wham it again. And you wham it again. And you wham it again. It's a baseball. It's a baseball bat. It's baseball cards. It's a baseball uniform. It's a baseball little D time. It's a baseball. Never mind the other children. That one child loves baseball. Then one day that wedge has been hit and that log splits into two. And you're not ever going to put that log together again. And Satan started with a little point of a wedge. And by the time with all the striking, all the striking, you now have that one log that has been split into two. Don't let that happen to your family. Don't divide your children with Satan's wedge. And a message that I said came from a pastor in Ledger, Connecticut. That coat was a wedge. And it's going to separate Joseph from Jacob for many, many years. Joseph's going to Egypt. Joseph is not going home. That log has been by the wedge of the coat, by the wedge. I love Joseph more than I love. It's a wedge. Let's read on. 31. And they took Joseph's coat. There's that coat, his little Sunday school coat. There it is. Let's bring that coat to the adult Sunday school. And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats. That hatred is called. Now, now Joseph didn't die, but a goat died. Why did that goat die? Because they hated. They had unkind words because there was more love for him than them that a goat died. You know that goat was not their goat? It was their father's goat. They are irresponsible. They have no authority. They had despised their father's good by killing one of their father's goats because they hated Joseph. These boys that were put in charge of Jacob's flock, Jacob earlier told Laban, if anything happened to your flock, I gave of my own. If a lion came and stole a sheep, I took one of my sheep and gave you the sheep. If a wolf came and attacked one of the lambs, I took one of the lambs and I replaced it for the lamb that was lost by the wolf. Jacob has put his sons in charge of his flocks and they kill a goat that belonged to their father because they hated their brother. A goat died because of hatred because I love a child more than the other child. Someone else is going to suffer 
for your sins in your family, that your family that you have brought up, that I have a favorite child, those children are going to grow up and they're going to have children and their children are going to suffer because of your sins. If you don't believe what I said, remember that this all started with Isaac loved Esau more than he loved Jacob, and Rebekah loved Jacob more than she loved Esau. There's that go. You are going to carry the sins over into your children's family, into your children's family, by what we're doing right now. And this is associated with what we learned the other day about parents sinning and the children sinning. There's trouble. Do you realize that if a, a, a if a parent goes out and has sexual relations with a, 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 the opposite of sex that is not their spouse, that they can get a STD, a sexually transmitted disease, and there's quite possibility that you can pass your sexually transmitted disease onto your children. I believe herpes is, is one of them sexually transmitted diseases that, that you can have relations with somebody who's not your spouse. Get herpes, I believe it is. And you can have marriage relations with your wife and you can pass herpes on to her. And you can, I, I believe you can pass herpes on to your children and they can probably pass it on to their children. You sold the seed of, of sexually transmitted disease. There are children today, newborn children, suffering in hospitals today under a drug addiction that they never been involved with any drug, but mama did drugs while she was pregnant. And the fact is, I, I've read and I've studied and I've seen that there are in hospitals today, today present, that there are nurses attending to newborn babies who are addicted to heroin, who are addicted to marijuana, who are addicted to all kinds of, of, of drug activity, trying to relieve that child of drugs. And that newborn baby never did drugs. Mama did drugs. Or maybe dad did drugs. And mama or daddy or Bo has had a sin of, I love this child more than that child. And I may not even know we're doing it. And it will be passing on to their children and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. As I said in the scriptures, in, in, in Genesis, Jacob, Isaac loved Esau more than Jacob, and Rebekah loved Jacob more than Isaac. Uh, uh, Israel, uh, Esau, and we see Jacob loving his children more than his other children. The sins of his parents has now passed unto him. The sin. I mean, it even goes forth to his wife. He loves Rachel more than he loved Leah. I, I know he did. He didn't want Leah in the first place, but he got stuck with Leah. He got a he got a Polish shotgun wedding, but maybe he should have turned the lights on before. But we move on. And they took Joseph's coat, killed the kid of the ghost, and dipped the coat in blood. We're not done. <laughs> Look at verse 32, Genesis 37, 32. And they sent the coat of many colors. They sent, they did not, the boy, the sons, did not 
carry that coat to their father. They gave that coat to somebody else. They said, here, take this coat and bring it to Jacob, our father. They didn't bring it. They sent the coat. Maybe it was UPS. I don't know. In other words, Pony is... They did not bring the coat. They sent the coat, and they brought it to their father. It went to their father, but by somebody else. And they said, this have we found. You didn't find it, you liar. You're lying. You're lying. No, now, whether it be thy son's coat or no, you know it's his coat. And he knew it. He said, this is my son's coat. This is the coat I gave to Joseph. Oh, Joseph, my wonderful great son, he deserves his coat. And it comes back to Jacob with no Joseph, with the blood of a goat that should not have died, that belonged to Jacob. And there's his sons surrounded by this coat that they know what happened. They know that they deceived their father. They know that they've done harm to Joseph. They got 20 pieces of silver. And that favorite coat for that favorite son comes back to Jacob with no son. An evil beast has devoured him. And Jacob's left with the thought that, that Joseph is dead being deceived by his sons. There's death. There's death. Is that not what John said? Is that not what Cain did? Is that not what Esau wanted? Now, it may not have been the blood of Joseph, but still there was death. And what is what is the, the, the main of this whole entire mess? I believe it was innocence. I don't believe that, that Isaac was really, ha ah, ha, Jacob, I love Esau. <laughs> I don't think Rebecca, <laughs> oh, Esau, you're just a pain in the butt, but oh, Joseph, you, I don't think it was like that. I think it was just natural, you know, that, hey, Esau, man, you make some good deer meat. But, I mean, the Bible says that Jacob could cook too, but eh, Esau is a little better. And then I just think it was all oh, Jakey. Ever since birth, he just, and then carried over to Jacob as a father. And it carried over with that cute little story of Jacob. I mean, a cute little story of Joseph in his coat of many colors. But then we bring the coat of many colors to this adult Sunday school class. And we see the deception of Satan. Of lies and murder. And damage. And that today in the church age, we can have that faithful family. They're saved. They, 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 they love the Lord. They are active in their church. And, and, and maybe a pastor of the church or, or maybe, you know what, the, the pastor looks at that family and says, wow. And I'm not saying they're not saved. And I'm not saying they're not faithful. But what I'm saying to close this message is in the children's bedrooms. What are the thoughts, the intents of the heart in the bedrooms of those children to their siblings, to their brothers or sisters in the other bedroom? And it may not be in every family. 
there may be, you know, there may be in the family, there, there's a little more love of a child. And the other child, hey, you know, I'm happy with how mom and dad loves me. I'm pleased. I'm content. And there may be that thing. But there also may be in a bedroom somewhere where I hate him. I hate what, what uh, he, you know, he gets every, he, get, he gets all the time. We do whatever he wants to do. I hate it. I don't get the love. Of, and, and, you know, you may pre oh, you, you know, you, your little bubble. You, you know, it may be an honest sin that that child feels neglected. That may be an honest sin that that child feels I'm unloved. And it may be true. And it may bring thoughts, and it may bring ideas, and it may be bring sin. There are certain circumstances where a child in a family may be legitimately feel unloved, uncared, unsatisfied, and it may be mom and or dad's fault. Here we go. Genesis 37, Genesis 25, Genesis 27, and gen back to Genesis 37. Those boys felt unloved by their father, and the scriptures tell us, the scripture tells us that Jacob, let's go right back up here. Let's see what the scriptures say. Verse 37, 4. And when the brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, the scriptures tell us that Joseph's brethren actually felt unloved and uncared for, and the scriptures say it was true. Don't you go preaching against the brethren of Joseph. Don't you say, oh, they just had an attitude. They just maybe me, 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 me. The scriptures say, the scriptures say. Now, what's the scriptures say about your household? 